from the uh, Radio Canada International, the CBC's international part. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are doing the Qing Chinese, so I'm coming to the conference. My first question is, uh, now the most investment uh, in AR is from China or either in the United States. Mm -hmm. And the Canada, is, I can't say it's stuck in between, but it's something we have to deal with into the two countries. But what kind of the position you think Canada can take in this kind of AR power struggle? Well, I, I don't see this as a as a str as a power struggle. I think that the, it's something that is happening in the planet, and that we have to help each other to build something good for humanity with AI. And I don't think that you need to be a huge country to have a big impact. So if you think about Silicon Valley, it's actually a small place, and it's having a huge impact in the world. Um, now, uh, in, in the case of Canada, it's true it's a small country, but we can. We can collaborate with countries like China, for example, and um, you know, science has always been something of a community thing. Uh, science scientists build on other, on each other's work in an open way, and and AI right now is making progress in an open way. You know, everything we do is published, and we know about each other's work. So it's it's not something that's like a military battle between countries. It's really something that's happening at the level of ideas and that is shared. A lot of the code that people develop, even in industry, is open source. So I'm not, I, I don't see this as a, uh, as, as, as a battle, but rather as an international collaboration. Okay. Uh, so that's my first question. My second question is, uh, it seems like we need to invest a lot of money into the AR, then you can make the good AR projects. But uh, for some like the smaller startups, do they still have the chance to get involved in AR or how going to start? So, so you're right, there's a need for investing and sometimes it takes a lot of capital. But the good news is that the heart of what is going on in AI is new algorithms. And these can be developed by just a few people. Then, of course, when you want to convert these new algorithms into uh, products, you need capital, for example, in order to obtain the right amount of data um, or to just be able to sell the products around the world. But uh, there's a huge interest and willingness from venture capitalists to invest in such companies and that's why there's such a growth there so you can have a small startup if you have uh, good ideas and a good idea for a product uh, and good science behind then you will find capital to grow and can grow quite fast so can i have the final question my final question is uh, uh, it's i think it's pretty obvious the ar can bring the big um, employment uh, waves that's possible, right? So are you concerned or what uh, we can do to kind of the help the people, right? Uh, avoid it happening. Yeah, I am concerned by the disruptions in the job market due to automation and especially the automation that will come from AI. And in fact, that's one of the reasons why I decided to, in addition to my role as a researcher and scientist, to get involved to help grow the uh, high-tech ecosystem here in Canada and I think uh, and the reason I think uh, this is important is because we want to make sure that the wealth that is going to be generated from AI can be uh, redistributed to help the transition in the job market to make sure that people who lose their jobs uh, are helped and don't fall uh, between the cracks so the role of governments here is quite important and uh, in general, we need to do a better job of rethinking our social safety net and education system with respect to the changes that are coming.